welcome to the Royal Albert Hall for the 100th Royal Variety performance in the presence of Her Royal Highness Her Majesty the Queen and His Royal Highness the Duke of Edinburgh. The show is in aid of the Entertainment Artists Benevolent Fund of which Her Majesty the Queen is patron. Her Majesty is introduced to Laurie Mansfield, Life President of the EABF and Chairman Giles Cooper. The money raised from tonight's event provides the EABF with funds to help those people from the world of entertainment in need of care and assistance. As the Royal Party makes its way into the hall, Catherine Jenkins prepares to lead the National Anthem. with Prince Philip for the Royal Variety Show. London's Victoria Palace, among stars lucky enough to be presented, were Nat King Cole. Sammy Davis was another. It was a very happy evening, Her Majesty is reported as saying. The people in the cheaper seats clap your hands. And the rest of you, if you just rattle your jewels. Because he's the only one who can get away with it, you know that. I'm glad all over. I wish you wouldn't do that. <laughs> What's it all about? Isn't he small? She said. <laughs> and what a show I think we have for us. Far, a long, long way to run. They've only got one hour. Very good, aren't they? She's not a new she was. There's more people back there than there are out here. She had an interesting left eye, the right one kept looking at it. Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome your host for this evening, Mr. David Walliams. Good evening. 
Good evening, and welcome to this, the 100th anniversary of the Royal Variety performance. Now, I was deeply honoured when I was asked to host tonight's show. I have to be honest, at first I was a little confused when the producer called me up and said, David, we'd like you to present a show for the Queen. And I said, why doesn't Simon Cowell just call me directly? <laughs> then the producer said, no, 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 the Queen the one who's in charge of the country. I said, yes, Simon, I know exactly who you're talking about. <laughs> no, 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 the queen, the one who's married to a duke. And I said, I didn't know Louis Walsh was a duke. <laughs> David, I mean the queen, he said. You've seen the crown jewels. Of course I have, I said. How do you think I got the job on Britain's Got Talent? <laughs> no, no. But of course, this show is in front of Her Majesty the Queen. And ma'am, may I congratulate you on your Diamond Jubilee. And tonight is another anniversary. It's 100 years since the first Royal Variety performance. And I was interested to discover who was on the bill for that very first show 100 years ago. There was Little Titch, Barclay Gammon, Bruce Forsyth. <laughs> of course, Bruce was a young man back then. He was only 49. Um, now, it takes a lot to put on a show like this. Since it began, the Raw Variety has used over 50 acres of costume fabric, half a million light bulbs, and 18,000 gallons of fake tan. <laughs> and that was just for Des O'Connor. But now it's time to introduce our very first act of the night. They've had amazing success over the last decade, and now, having taken a break, they're back together. Please welcome Girls Aloud! <laughs> Can you 
still to come on the Royal Variety Performance, the fabulous Kylie Minogue, comedy genius Bill Bailey, and global superstars One Direction. Ladies and gentlemen, I give you Bill Bailey! Thank you! Good evening. And that music you just heard is the exact sound of the Buckingham Palace doorbell. <laughs> You're from London, some Londoners in, lovely. Yes, I love London. London's great. Oh, it's brilliant. I love it. It's such a magnificently multicultural, magnificent, wonderful place. There's a butcher's at the end of my road called Halal. Is it meat you're looking for? <laughs> Trumpets are fantastic instruments. They're all about celebration. Tonight's about celebration. And trumpets have long been the instrument associated with ceremony, but also in a military capacity. The sound of the trumpet was used on the battlefield to cut across the clamor of battle, to sound the retreat, in a way that perhaps the harp wouldn't have been quite so effective. <laughs> retreat, retreat, move backwards with your feet. Yeah. <laughs> and classical music also contains functional elements to it. I'll give you an example, something which is used often in piano music. It's called the Alberti bass. Mozart was a big fan. And I think it's a way of enlivening rather unremarkable TV themes, you know, like EastEnders, for example. Which is so depressing, isn't it? <laughs> to me, that sounds like, everyone is going to die. It just... <laughs> but with the Alberti, of course. This sounds a bit classier. <laughs> it could work equally well with the match of the day theme, couldn't it? <laughs> it's rather nice. Although I must admit, when it comes to match of the day, I prefer the lounge version. A brisk and jolly march, isn't it? <laughs> and if you slow it right down, you get a Jewish folk song. of a great tune, very versatile. And another thing about a great tune, you can play it on any instrument. 
And I'd like to demonstrate that now as I play a medley of popular songs on a rather unusual instrument. <laughs> Tried before. <laughs> the finale of the 1812 Overture. <laughs> This lady is one of my favorite singers. I have all her records, all her videos, and some of her dresses. <laughs> I realize now I shouldn't have broken in and taken them. Very kindly lifting the restraining order to allow me to introduce her tonight. It's Miss Kylie Minogue!
Now it's time to welcome one of our best loved entertainers whose glittering career spans over 70 years. He is a national treasure, and it's a huge pleasure for me to introduce one of my idols tonight. Ladies and gentlemen, Sir Bruce Forsyth! <laughs> Thank you, thank you. You're so kind, you're so generous, and you're so right. <laughs> it's nice to see you, to see you. Nice. Not as big as Wembley, but never mind. <laughs> but the reason I'm here tonight is because the Royal Variety Show is a hundred years old. Actually, it's only 16 years older than me. But what I feel about life now is you're as young as you feel. Now, what I try to do, I try to take it easy. If I feel like sitting down, I sit down and, and have a little rest. And uh, if you don't mind, I'll put that down there for now. But uh, it's the next stage I'm worrying about. When you sink your teeth into a nice big juicy steak and they stay there. <laughs> when you wake up in the middle of the night and you don't know whether you've gone or not. And when you see a beautiful girl walking down the street, <laughs> and you don't know why you're staring at her. <laughs> so, and the other thing I cut down a bit, I don't tap dance as much as I used to. No, yes, well, I feel the same. I do miss it, but I don't... But I, I do miss tap dancing uh, sitting down, which could be just as enjoyable in a way. But... <laughs> Here we go, then. A one, two, a one, two, three, four. <laughs> Finished you. Oh, I'm sorry. <laughs> no, I was going to do a little, a little couple of steps to get me off, you see. Oh, okay. Would, would you like to join me? Um. Yeah. All right, Dave, yeah. just do that last bit again, right? A one, two, a one, two, three, four. was so bad. <laughs> I wish I was still doing the generation game. What a, what a contestant you make. Oh, well, uh, thank you, Bruce. I just like to say I've been loving you on this series of Strictly. Oh, that's very kind. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you. In fact, yeah. I watch you every year, but you never win. <laughs> but I've never been voted off either. And of course, congratulations on your knighthood. Oh. You, you must have been thrilled to receive it so early on in your career. I, I can't read the bloody words. <laughs> no, but you see, we hadn't done this till today. Right. <laughs> One day, David, you will be made a dame. E Panto! <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, Sir Bruce Forsyth! <laughs> Thank you very much.
still ahead, the sensational One Direction. Classical superstars Placido Domingo and Catherine Jenkins. Plus, Britain's Got Talent winners Ashley and Pugsy. Thank you very much indeed for that warm reception, although I didn't really do much. Your Majesty, for £5,000, the chase is on. So, force of habit. My first Royal Variety performance was in 1993 at the Dominion in Tottenham Court Road, and I was sharing a dressing room with Frank Carson, Joe Pasquale, Brian Connolly, Shane Ritchie and Darren Day, just six comics having some fun and teasing anyone that come in. We're having a chat and all of a sudden this door opened up and a lad stood there with two boxes and Carson said, what do you want? <laughs> Who are you? And the lad said, um, this is my dressing room, I've come to share. The dressing room. And Pasquale went, what do you do then? What is it that you do? What do you do for a living? What do you do? <laughs> he said, I'm a magician. And Carson said, we've already got one of them and he's rubbish. <laughs> Tell him, squeaky rubbish. And Squeaky went, yes, to be fair, I am rubbish, I am rubbish, but I earn a living. So we said, and he said, well, I'm coming in anyway, because this is my dressing room, and starts unloading these boxes. And Carson said to him, can you pull a rabbit out of a hat? And Pasquale said, no, but I can pull a hair out of my ass." And the magician <laughs> just picked up the boxes and left. <laughs> well, next up, it is the biggest thing to come out of the X Factor since Louis Walsh's hairdressing bill. America has described them as the British invasion, but then again, they said that about foot and mouth. <laughs> they have the world at their feet and six pounds of hair wax on their heads. Their latest single, Little Things, was inspired by a chance meeting with Ronnie Corbett in a Turkish bath. <laughs> Please give it up for the boy band sensation that is One Direction. <laughs> Just for me, but bear this in mind, it was meant to be. And I'm joining up the dots with the freckles on your cheeks, and it all makes sense to me. I know you've never loved the crinkles by your eyes when you smile, you've never loved your stomach or your thighs, the dimples in your back at the bottom of your spine, but I love them endlessly. I won't let these little things slip out of my mouth. But if I do, it's you, oh, it's you they add up to. I'm in love with you. And all these little things. You can't go to bed without a cup of tea Maybe that's the reason that you talk in your sleep And all those conversations are the secrets that I keep Makes no sense to me I know you've never loved the sound of your voice on tape You've never want to know how much you weigh You still love to squeeze into your jeans but you're perfect to me And I won't let these little things slip out of my mouth But if it's true, it's you, it's you They add up to, I'm in love If I let you know I'm here for you Then maybe you love yourself like I love you Oh, 
Cause I've just let these little things slip out of my mouth Cause it's you, oh it's you, it's you they add up to And I'm in love with you And all these little things, I won't let these little things slip out of my mouth but if it's true, it's you, it's you, they add up to, I'm in love with you, and all your little things. shape or form, yeah. yeah. Oh, Liam, you're my favourite member of One Direction. I love you with your sexy action man hair. <laughs> Will you marry me? No. Louis, you're my second favourite member of One Direction. Will you marry me? No. <laughs> Zane, <clears throat> you're my third favourite member of One Direction. Will you marry me? Mm, no. Oh. No! You're my favourite Irish member of One Direction. <laughs> Will you marry me? Nope. Hi, Harry. Hi. Will you take a picture of me with One Direction? <laughs> Thank you very much. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you. And now, it's Amanda Holden. The Royal Variety Performance is the most entertaining programme in the world. So when Britain's Got Talent first began in 2007, the prize had to be the biggest in the business and the chance to perform in front of the Royal Family on the Royal Variety Show has proved to be irresistible. Let's have a look at some of the most memorable moments and I think you have to agree it proves beyond doubt that Britain really has got the best talent in the world. Hello everyone, and welcome to Britain's Got Talent! You nailed it! I think you are the ones to beat tonight. What's your name, darling? Susan Boyle. World class blew me away. Go, Britain! Here tonight are some of the stars that have made their names on our show. Please would you welcome Ashley Banjo and Diversity with their celebration of British talent, joined by a few familiar faces. One child brought an entire museum to life. And to finish off our special British exhibition, we have iconic British talent. Moving on. Brought an entire museum to life.
our diversity. Ladies and gentlemen, 100 years of the Royal Variety. But diversity were not the only life in the museum that night.
Britain has talent. Comedy on the way from the award-winning Rod Gilbert and the much-loved Ronnie Corbett. Plus, a show-stopping performance from Robbie Williams. Despite being a comedy superstar, this man has never lost touch with his Welsh roots. Flying in on his private jet from his home in Monte Carlo, please welcome Rod Gilbert! Let me hear you make some noise! You are, it is wonderful to be here. This is my second uh, Royal Variety performance. I almost, uh, I'm going to confess something, I almost didn't make this one. Uh, I was, well, at half past four this afternoon, I genuinely thought I was going to be arrested in a Tesco Metro's. I'll tell you what it's about. I'll cut straight to the point. This is what caused the argument. This is why I was almost arrested. This packet of jacket potatoes. <laughs> I was almost arrested because of this jacket potatoes. I, uh, basically, I only wanted one. <laughs> I'm going away first thing on tomorrow morning on holiday. I wanted one jacket potato for my dinner tonight. So I called the manager. I said, excuse me, I just want one jacket potato. She said, I'm sorry, sir, they come in packs of two. I said, no, they don't. You did this. <laughs> She said, you what? I said, you did this. This isn't Noah's vegetable rack. Potatoes come in ones. <laughs> it's one potato, two potato, three potato, four. Not two potato, four potato, six potato, eight. <laughs> she said, but there's two in the pack. I said, I can see there's two in the pack. I'm not an idiot, but I'm making jacket potato for my dinner, and I'm pretty sure I can nail it on the first attempt. <laughs> so I don't need a contingency potato. So just take one out and I'll be on my way. Everyone's happy. She said, we can't possibly do that. We don't sell them singly. You'll have to take the two and have the other one another day. I said, I would normally, but I'm going away at six o'clock tomorrow morning and I don't really want a jacket potato at half past five for breakfast. <laughs> and she said, couldn't you take it with you? I said, I'm going to America. That's where potatoes came from in the first place. What do you want me to tell their customs officers that I'm bringing them back one by one? <laughs> Oh, don't worry, officer, they didn't get far, and this one's the ringleader. Here he is, come on, you, get him back in there. This is where apparently I could have been arrested, because I said, give it to her, I'll split the pack, I'll do it. She said, you, could, you do that, you could be arrested. I said, and charged with what? Separating potatoes? <laughs> Bring it on, I'll be out in six months, you don't frighten me. She said, she said, just start, calm down, don't you just calm down, sir, just, she said, take the two and have, you know, just take the two and give the other one away. <laughs> and she said, oh, wait a minute, I'm doing the Royal Variety performance tonight. I could give it to Her Majesty the Queen. <laughs> I mean, it worked for Sir Walter Raleigh all those years ago with Queen Elizabeth I. I know this is only one, but it's the thought that counts, Your Majesty. <laughs> and I know it's petty, ma'am, I know it's petty, I apologise, but I can't help it. It's packaging winds me up because we have to pay for it, we don't need it, and then we have to, we have to try and recycle it. Can't you do something, ma'am? <laughs> she said, well, people don't like loose potatoes. I said, of course people don't like loose potatoes. Watching four potatoes sitting around discussing the menopause is only marginally more interesting than loose women, and I should know I've appeared on it three times. <laughs> I said, justify it. If you can justify the plastic, we'll do it that way. Every bit of packaging you justify, I will pay for. She said, but it protects the potatoes. I said, who is trying to harm our potatoes? <laughs> who is it they have to get past me first? Where are they? She said, I didn't say anybody was trying to harm them. I said, well, if it's a self-harming potato, you can keep it. <laughs> I want a potato with low self-esteem who's going to start peeling himself every time things get a bit difficult. I want to come home to find a suicide note and a pan of mash on the hob. <laughs> I said, because I'm afraid I want a single stark naked, label free, cellophane free, upside down if need be, self-confident potato that isn't going to get all chippy when I offer to give him a lift home. 
It didn't work. I had to buy the two. <laughs> I'm stuck with it, stuck with a spare potato. So what I thought I would do is be as good as my word, and seeing as it's the jubilee year, I thought I would present you this potato, ma'am, as a token of my appreciation, and I've arranged to have it delivered by your butler. <laughs> this is my contingency potato, and I send it to you with warm wishes and congratulations on a long and prosperous reign. Thank you. Thank you very much, ladies and gentlemen. I'm Rod Gilbert. Thank you very much. You'll be lovely. Cheers. Good night. Thank you, ladies and gentlemen. I have some late news for you. There's been an incident backstage. A hole has been drilled into the wall of Girls Aloud's dressing room. Police are looking into it. First, a police message. Will the man who lost eight bottles of whiskey this morning at Euston Station please go to the lost property office by platform nine, where the man who found them has just been handed in? <laughs> Tonight's production of The Mousetrap in London has been cancelled due to some cast members being taken ill. Herman Bleasels has German measles. Dickie Knox has chicken pox, and Robin Weenus has a throbbing headache. <laughs> Meanwhile, the founder of IKEA, Bjorn Svensson's funeral, will be held tomorrow at one o'clock, although mourners are requested to arrive at noon to help assemble the coffin. <laughs> Last night, a new call centre opened, which is staffed entirely by sea mammals. Phone calls will be monitored for training porpoises. <laughs> An elephant caused havoc today after escaping from London Zoo. Fortunately, a zookeeper managed to catch up with the beast and stun him by telling him he was adopted. <laughs> Finally, a giant monkey caused havoc this afternoon in China after rampaging through a table tennis match while performing a musical number. In summary, it's a Hong Kong, King Kong, Ping Pong, Sing Song, Ding Dong. <laughs> but now, ladies and gentlemen, here performing Come What May from the Moulin Rouge, it is the fabulous Catherine Jenkins and the legendary Placido Domingo.
such a perfect grace. Suddenly my life doesn't seem such a waste. It all revolves around sold over 60 million albums, which is why he was named Employee of the Month at our price. Yeah, <laughs> there'll be jokes, there'll be jokes, yeah. He is one of British music's biggest exports. Please welcome to the stage, Mr. Robbie Williams! <laughs> Seventy million records. Something deep inside me dies Cause I know you won't get better, better, better You'd rather be right than be loved The only thing I understood Nothing's ever good enough Stumble through the words as they're leaving me Tremble at the sight of your majesty I cut myself just to get them out This time I'll be different, I promise you This time I'll be special, you know I will Just don't leave with me in your eyes, your eyes, your eyes My health. If you're not here, I fight myself. You're supposed to make this better, better, better. No self control and no reason why. If I don't change, then we both die. This is it for you and I. Blisters at the end of my fingertips. Praying to a God. I Yeah. 
Harvey. Thank you. That was amazing. Hmm. Thank you. And there's a lady backstage who is a massive fan of you. She's kind of your number one fan. I wondered if it was okay if she could meet you. Yeah, who is it? It's Minana. How <laughs> old is she? She's a young 97. She's got pictures of you all over her nursing home. That's fantastic. Um, is it okay if I, if I bring her out? Yeah, 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 no problem, yeah. You sure you're okay with that? Yeah, yeah. You just wait there, yeah? Yeah, yeah. Just wait right there, yeah? Okay. Just stay there, Robbie, yeah? Okay. Just wait there, yeah. <clears throat> Come on, Nana. Hang on a sec, Robbie. She just needs to go to the toilet. No, she's all right. She's going to hold it in. That's good to know. That's good to know. Here she is. Sorry, it's Gary Barlow. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, isn't he doing a great job, Mr. Matt Lucas? <laughs> Gary Barlow, OBE. Robbie Williams, nothing. <laughs> you organise one birthday party. In. It'd be my pleasure to sing for you a song that I absolutely love. It's called Mr. Bojangles. Go something like this. Unmissable performance from Ashley and Patsy, the cast of the hit musical Matilda, 
and David Williams and Alan Carr like you've never seen them before. I am sat up here in the box with three stars of the West End who all take turns playing the lead role in a hit musical. Now you are... Matilda. And you are... Matilda. And you are... Matilda. And all these girls are appearing in the brilliant show... Sorry, what's it called? Matilda. Which is based on the book by Roald Dahl. Was it, was it? Matilda. Yes, all right, I'm just testing that. <laughs> OK, so with a performance from the RSC's hit show, please welcome the cast of... What's it called? Matilda. Yeah, all right. <laughs> Of a clock, all escapes start with a click of a lock. 
If you're stuck in your story and want to get out You don't have to cry, you don't have to shout Cause if you listen you can do a lot of shit Just let a little thing like little stop you If you sit around and nothing gets on top you Won't change a thing Gentlemen, unfortunately, I have some bad news for you. Sadly, due to illness, the winners of Britain's Got Talent, Ashley and Pudsey, are unable to appear. So, we've had to improvise. For tonight's performance, the role of Ashley will be played by Alan Carr. will be played by your host, David Williams. They've made a miraculous recovery of MJ. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome to the stage the real Ashley and Pudsey. <laughs>
West End's hottest new musical is a stage show based on the smash hit movie The Bodyguard. And the star of the show is here tonight. Please welcome the award winning Heather Headley.
one of the nation's favourite comedians, Jimmy Tarbo. Plus sensational performances from classical music star Andrea Bocelli and the breathtaking Alicia Keys. Please welcome classical music's biggest selling solo artist, Andrea Bocelli. La donna è mobile, qual più mal vento, muta da cento e di pensiero, sempre un amabile leggiadro viso. Impiante riso e ben sognero, la donna è mobile, qual più mal vento, muta vento, ed il pensiero. Fida, chi le confida, mal cauta il cuore, ormai non sente si felice a pieno, chi su quel seno non viva amore, la donna è mobile, qual più mal vento, muta la Comedy has played such an important part at the Royal Variety over the years, so much so that some of the biggest comedians in the country have hosted the evening. Shame they couldn't get one tonight. But now, <laughs> to salute the comedy legends that have graced the Royal Variety stage over the years and revisit some of those magical moments, please welcome the great Jimmy Tarbuck. I'll tell you, it ain't gonna get better than that. Good night. That'll do me. <laughs> it's a hundred years. Uh, and what a year it is. Come on now. A great year. A jubilee year. And a great year for our little island. Do you not agree? <laughs> Come on. Whoa. But all this night brings for me, ladies and gentlemen, our memories. Memories of my first royal show and I did okay, and the Queen turned round to Prince Albert and said, yes, we are amused. <laughs> it's a joke, love, I wasn't really on it, all right. <laughs> We're gonna honor tonight some of the great, great laughter makers that have done 100 years of this wonderful show. We're gonna start with 1964, and see if you all remember this guy. Look at the screens. A young newcomer from the pubs and clubs of Liverpool and the North. Cease! Well, good evening. My name's Jimmy Tarbuck. I think I ought to tell you this, because I'm the only one on here tonight you've never heard of. Ah! Ah! I was very nervous that night I'd come down from Liverpool, 
and I shared a dressing room with two giants of comedy, Morecambe and Wise and Tommy Cooper. And they were just the kings. And I just want you to see these two acts in their very best pomp. Watch the boys. Here's a quick joke. Now, I must tell you this, I want to hear it my son. Now, listen. There's a man, see? <laughs> and he's sitting on top of a bus, and he's got a banana sticking out of his ear. A banana sticking out of his ear. Well, another man saw this, because he was watching him like that. And he said to himself, well, I must tell him. Well, he would, wouldn't he? So he went up to him, he said, excuse me, the man said, speak up, I've got a banana stick out of me. <laughs> what a wonderful night that was, folks. Oh, yeah. Great, really great. Tommy stole the show, and Her Majesty has heard me tell this. I have to tell it again, Mum. And it was time to meet the Queen. And there he was, he'd been great. And our lovely lady came along, she said, you were very funny tonight, Tommy. He went, thank you. Did I make my queen laugh? She said, you did make your queen laugh. He said, could I ask my queen something a little? She went, what? He said, personal. She went, yes, what is it? He said, do you like football? Oh, she went, not particularly. He said, could I have your tickets for the cup final? <laughs> That's true, he said that. <laughs> comedy, comedy comes in many guises. There are stand-up comics, and of course, there are great comedy actors. And the greatest comedy actor team there has ever been in comedy, I promise you, are Laurel and Hardy. They did the royal show, and it was wonderful. And when I was a little boy, I used to see them on the cartoons in Liverpool. And my dad took me to the theatre one night, the Liverpool Empire, didn't tell me they were on, and they walked on. I was eight, and I just looked, and I ran down the aisle to the rail. And he went, hiya, kid, with his tie. And that's what got me into comedy. I think they were the greatest. But our greatest, and I think a lot of you would agree, only fools and horses. Oh, yeah. <laughs> wonderful, wonderful laughs. Now you'll see Del Boy, Rodney, and Uncle Albert. They got lost on the way back to Peckham and ended up on a royal stage. <laughs> Del. Look who is sitting in the box to your right. What well, is sitting oh, in the I box? <laughs> is that you, Chunky? I don't think, ladies and gentlemen, any of us will forget the chandelier falling or him going through the bar. But here are a few more of Jimmy Tarbuck's comedy heroes. I think you'll like these. We've had one slight problem. We've lost the theatre cat. If you do see this beautiful little animal, please report to one of the usherettes. It's a lovely cat. Now I thought it had one eye that I realised it was walking backwards. <laughs> I read this thing once in a magazine and it was a test to see whether you needed to wear one or not. And the test was if you could hold a pencil underneath. It was, I mean, it was very depressing for me. I think I could hold a small branch of W. H. Smith on the one. Absolute legends. It would be. Oh, yeah. It would be very remiss of me not to have one more. And this guy was the first gentleman of British comedy. He was a gentleman and he was a gentle man. The late and great Eric Sykes. Bless him. Oh, yeah. He was partially blind, he was deaf, and yet he was a great comic. And on his 80th birthday, 
we took him up to Coombe Hill Golf Club to have a game. We steered him round the course. We all got in the showers later. He still had his glasses on, cigar and a bottle of beer. And we all sang happy birthday. He said, thanks, lads. And we all waited for the reply. He went, oh, feet, you're 80. Happy birthday. Oh, knees, you're aching. You've carried me round. Happy birthday. Hello, Willie. <laughs> if you were alive, it'd be your birthday too. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, it's been a great honour appearing on these royal shows. Mom, I do hope you've enjoyed the comedy and had a laugh, because it's been a great pleasure for us. God bless. Now it's time for one of the world's most beautiful women to take to the stage. <laughs> no, I'm not talking about me, but thank you. <laughs> Making her Royal Variety debut, it's singing sensation, Alicia Keys! Stopping moment from Rod Stewart. 
and making his Royal Variety debut, Neil Diamond brings the house down. Ladies and gentlemen, a Royal Variety favourite, Des O'Connor. Thank you. It's always a buzz to get an invite for an evening like this, a lot of fun. And in 1997, the royal couple up there had a wedding anniversary, their 50th, and we were doing a royal show that night. And we thought it'd be a nice idea to live with a little present for their wedding anniversary. I thought it was a good idea at the time, but here's a little clip of Joe Pasquale and myself with the gift that turned out to be a camel. I don't think this is a good idea. They've just had new carpets put down at Windsor Castle. I don't think... <laughs> I mean, you see... You see the Queen trooping the colour on this, do you, or something like that? It'd be like a new Britain. It'd be like New Brighton is what it'd be like. <laughs> we don't want this. What's it doing now? Oh, no, he's just having a look around. He likes yeah, OK, it. fine. Likes it here. I don't think Her Majesty would like the camel. Eh? I'm not going to give Her Majesty a Listen, camel. It'd make a nice change from walking the corgis up the now, wouldn't it? <laughs> After the show, the palace politely declined the offer of the camel. And uh, Joe Pasquale, being an animal lover, took the camel home that night, kept it in his kitchen. He kept ringing me up and saying, you should see the size of our cat flap. <laughs> right now, this program has always had one aspect that never, ever changes over the years. It manages to bring together and attract the biggest stars from the world of show business. Here's a real star, a British star, truly international star. Please welcome Rod Stewart! When you wish upon a star Makes no difference who you are Your heart desires will come to you If your heart is in your dream No request is too extreme When you wish upon a star as dreamers do Fate is kind She brings to those who love The sweet fulfillment of Secret longings Like a bolt Out of the blue Fate steps in And sees you through When you wish Upon a star As dreams Upon a star Makes no difference Who you are Anything Your heart desires Will come to you When you wish Upon a star no difference who you are your dreams will come
Have I missed it? <laughs> Rod must be feeling a bit stupid now. Right. <laughs> On with the show. <laughs> Through the years, the Raw Variety has welcomed a host of international acts. And tonight, it gives me great pleasure to introduce a dance troupe that are stunning audiences all over the world. This is really beginning to hurt now. <laughs> it's Cuba's incredible Ballet Revolution! Variety stage has been graced by many of our greatest entertainers. Please welcome 
the incredible violinist Nicola Benedetti with a tribute to some of those leading lights who will always be missed but never forgotten. the stage, Placido Domingo. Your Majesty, Your Royal Highness, ladies and gentlemen, on my travels around the world, I have discovered wonderful voices who I am convinced you would love as I did when I first heard them. And I am sure you will give a very warm welcome to China's three tenors.
Your Majesty, it's a great honor to be here tonight. We are China's three tenors from Beijing. Normally, we sing operas around the world, but now we are going to sing a funny Chinese folk song for you. Hope you enjoy it. halfway point of the performance. <laughs> Please welcome to the stage, with amazingly, his first ever performance at the Royal Variety, one of the greatest singer-songwriters of all time, Neil Diamond! <laughs> Hello again, hello Just call to say hello I couldn't sleep at all tonight And I know it's late I just couldn't wait Hello my friends, hello I just call to let you know I think about you every night when I'm here alone and you're there at home Hello Lately it's been crazy, maybe I'm to blame Won't you put your heart above your head? We've been through it all, you love me just the same And when you're not there, I just need to hear Hello my friends, hello It's good to need yourself It's good to want you Like I do And to feel this way When I hear you say Hello I 
so much how great it is to be back in England and to be honored to perform for Her Majesty the Queen. I bring with you the love of my fellow Americans and we wish you many, many more years on the throne, we love you. Where it began, I can't begin to know it. But then I know it's growing strong. Wasn't the spring. Spring became the summer Who'd have believed you'd come along Man Touching hands Reaching out Touching me Touching Good times never seem so good
ladies and gentlemen, please join me in giving three cheers for Her Majesty the Queen and His Royal Highness the Duke of Edinburgh. Hip hip! Hip hip! Hip hip! hip, hip. Thank you and good night. The Royal Party make their way to the stage to meet the stars of tonight's show. Her Majesty is presented to One Direction and the winners of Britain's Got Talent, Ashley and Pudsey. Followed by Robbie Williams and one of tonight's leading ladies, Alicia Keys. Then Placido Domingo, who performed a special duet with Catherine Jenkins. Next to meet Her Majesty is classical star Andrea Bocelli and the legendary Rod Stewart, plus Neil Diamond, who closed tonight's show with a memorable performance of Sweet Caroline. Kylie Minogue is presented, followed by two of our finest comedians, the much-loved Bill Bailey and the award-winning Rod Gilbert. Next, Amanda Holden and the leading ladies of Matilda, the musical. Then, Bradley Walsh and China's three tenors who flew in from Beijing especially for tonight's performance. Some of our best-loved entertainers, Sir Bruce Forsyth, Ronnie Corbett, Jimmy Tarbuck, and Des O'Connor, who have appeared on many royal varieties, greet Her Majesty on this centenary night. Followed by Girls Aloud, who opened tonight's show. And finally, a warm reception for tonight's host, David Walliams. From everyone here at the Royal Albert Hall, good night. Watching those famous faces leaving the jungle is definitely worth capturing on camera. They can't wait to get back to a life of luxury, so it's lucky ITV1's cameras were there. Because on Wednesday night at 8, Anton Deck presents I'm a Celebrity, Get Me Out of Here, coming out, following the celeb's first few days of freedom. The last in a series of The Agenda is at 10.50 tonight. That's after the news, which is next.